it's finally happening. The iPhone 44 is on its way out, and after being in the market for 345 days at the time of this recording, there's been lots of good things, not so good things, and most likely the last sighting of the good old lightning bolt. Buckle up, and let's go for the ride. After almost a year, I'd say the build and design quality have been up to scratch from the chassis, the backplate, all the way to the cameras. The fill just screams premium with the stainless steel chassis in tandem with the delicate backplate enveloping all the internals and while it's been an absolute joy to use, the idea of a titanium frame in the 15 Pro is so alluring. Speaking of alluring, the deep purple colorway was exactly that, but with the release of the 15 Pro in a few weeks time, we are set to see new colorways with red, blue and grey being some of the colors thrown around in the tech grab vibe. Another mainstay in Apple's design language, the lightning port has also been amazing to use over the past few years, but with so many devices jumping on USB-C, it was a bit annoying to always carry a separate lightning cable to juice it up when it's running low on juice. Over the years, we've also seen a gradual change in design of the cameras, more so in terms of size, from the outer chassis of the lenses all the way to the sensors and if Apple's pattern is anything to go by, there's a likelihood the 15 Pro will also receive a bump in size. If you'd ask me, I much prefer smaller lenses even on the iPhone 14 Pro, nonetheless the size increase hasn't been that big of an issue for me. When it comes to the display, the 6.1 Retina XDR display coupled with 1600 nits of peak brightness and 2000 nits of peak brightness have been an absolute joy to use when I'm out and about. I've also enjoyed the 120Hz ProMotion display when switching between apps, scrolling through pages on a Word document and even when it drops down to 60Hz on low power mode, the change is noticeable for the tech nuts out there. For the average consumer, you most likely wouldn't notice any difference. Always on display was also another exciting upgrade when the iPhone 14 Pro launched, but soon afterwards most people binned it, myself included, because of the battery drain and other than the satisfying feeling of seeing the screen fade out and the clock and dead pop, there wasn't any significant benefits, but with upgrades coming with iOS 17, I might reconsider and here's why. Enter Standby Mode. To sum it up in a nutshell, when you place your phone on a MagSafe charger horizontally, it turns into a smart home light display with really cool widgets that are customizable. Moving along, it would be a disservice if we didn't talk about the dynamic island as it's garnered some mixed reactions in its short lifespan. From people calling it a gimmick, wasted space, the list goes on and on. In my opinion, I think it was a good addition because of the functionality it adds for instance, showcasing the countdown timer while I'm doing my workouts in the gym, then come back home and do the same while preparing dinner, easy access to my navigation app of choice when I'm out and about, showing airdrop progress just to name but a few. With iOS 17, it gets even better as it now accommodates different app functionalities unlike how it was before with just a few apps. From a personal standpoint, I'd like to see it get smaller and again, just like when the notch was first introduced in the iPhone X, it was quite big, then the next gen version slowly became smaller. Next up is performance and after a year of using the 14 Pro, in my opinion, it's been satisfactory and for few good reasons. First and foremost, the S16 Bionic chip has been absolutely crushing it, being the driving force behind the running of the iPhone 14 Pro and having used the previous gen 13 Pro, there's a slight difference. Secondly, the camera has also been amazing to use and for context, it's what I've shot my videos with since I bought it almost a year ago, minus the few occasions when my Canon M50 and iPhone 13 Pro step in. More on the camera a little later in the video. Stringing along the performance, even though it's not specifically built for gaming, it's been doing just as well and being a creator, it's also an alternative workstation when I want to edit my thumbnails on Lightroom Classic or piece up a reel quickly on Instagram. The 120Hz ProMotion display has made it a breeze when I'm going through apps whether it's scrolling through X to find what's trending, checking out desk setups on Instagram, or just casually swapping candies on Candy Crush, I haven't had any qualms with it. And while on the subject of performance, software updates are the perfect segue to it. Like most of you would know, your iPhone's performance is directly tied on how good your software is functioning, and for the iPhone 14 Pro, since it's released with iOS 16, I haven't experienced any major issues through all its software updates apart from the few bugs here and there, which didn't significantly hinder my user experience. In saying that, some of the notable software issues we've seen through the iOS 16 cycles include rattling of the camera in third-party apps like Snapchat and TikTok, which was fixed by an update in iOS 16.0.2. Then we also saw the appearance of horizontal lines across the screen, which again was fixed by an update in the iOS 16.0.2. 
With iOS 17 developer beta already out, some of the notable bugs have been app and widget freezing, which hopefully gets fixed when the full version comes out at the launch of the 15 lineup. All in all, the new features like live widgets and standby mode have been amazing to use. When it comes to the camera, the jump from a 12 megapixel sensor to a 48 megapixel sensor was evident across the different camera modes, and you could clearly see from the reduction in noise in low light conditions and just general photos. Speaking of modes, I also like the upgrade from 1080p in the iPhone 13 Pro to 4K in the iPhone 14 Pro when shooting in cinematic, which just makes those cinematic shots come out so crisp. Auto exposure was also another great addition which made the camera super easy to use even for a person with the least camera knowledge. This explains why majority of my videos have been shot with the iPhone 14 Pro despite owning a full frame camera in the Canon M50. As for the upgrades in the upcoming 15 Pro, I'd love to see a bump in the zoom capabilities from 3x to even 10x although the grapevine around the zoom on the 15 Pro is said to be 6x. If you'd ask me, I'd prefer more, but Apple being the classic LED movers they are, I'm not surprised, putting in mind they introduced the always on display in the 14 Pro long after the Android counterparts had done it. A good addition I've had though is the introduction of a periscope camera in the 15 Pro, which would be great, but we'll have to wait and see if it's actually true. To sum up the camera debate, it's simply amazing. As for the battery, the 14 Pro has had significant issues and I'd say on average I've been getting anywhere between 6 to 8 hours of use before needing to juice it up, which has been a bit annoying, putting in mind I'm not one of those people with insanely long screen times minus the days I'm shooting videos on my iPhone 14 Pro. Luckily for me, that's about as worse as it gets, since there's been so many complaints around the degradation of the battery health and charging of the iPhone 40 Pro. After almost a year, my maximum capacity still stands at 100%, which hasn't been the case for some of the users out there. With the 15 lineup switching to USB-C, it will be quite interesting to see how well the iPhones are optimized for that. When it comes to features, car crash detection and emergency SOS were excellent additions. Luckily for me, again, I haven't been in a situation where I had to put them into use, but there's been reports of people using them and it saved a lot of lives. Whether there'll be any improvements to these features in the 15 lineup, it's a matter of time. In conclusion, it's safe to say, after a year, the iPhone 14 Pro continues Apple's legacy of innovation and refinement with its ProMotion XDR display remaining stunning, offering unrivaled color accuracy with smooth visuals thanks to the S16 Bionics chip's performance, which also delivers seamless multitasking and impressive energy efficiency despite the issues surrounding its battery life. The upgraded camera system equipped with light sensors and enhanced computational photography made taking exceptional photos and videos even in challenging conditions so easy and while these improvements are notable, they might not justify an upgrade from the previous gen for all users unless you've got an iPhone 12 or 11. All in all, the iPhone 14 Pro remains a top tier smartphone, the last of its kind which marks the end of an era with the 15 lineup switching to USB-C. Well, that sums up my final review of the iPhone 14 Pro, so if you found this video helpful or just enjoyed it, leave an Apple emoji in the comment section and I'll give it a like. And while down there, don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post a new video. To see what's on my iPhone 14 Pro, check out this video. Until then, people of the internet, I'm signing out. See you on the next one.